name is Joanne Cole, the one who's in the news. I don't know what to say. Well, did you tell the truth? What? In the news, did you tell the truth? A portion of it. I'd like you to tell me the whole truth. Hey, I'm sorry, baby. Why does it have to be every single night you never want to be with me? Duty calls, Joanne. You promised you'd stay home tonight. Hey, what would you rather have? Me loafing around here? Or maybe it'd be nice to have some money in the bank, okay? You said you wouldn't work nights anymore. <sighs> Look, I got a shitload of pressure on me right now. Okay. Payments just went up on the ex-wife's house. This place is killing me. Two cars. Don't start with me, okay? Why not? You never finish with me. <clears throat> hey, why don't you take a tranquilizer, okay? Go to sleep. I'll be back in a few hours. David, I don't want to go to sleep. I want to feel you touch me. I want to feel like you still love me. That's all I ever wanted. I don't care about the cars, the money. I just want you to be with me. I need you. I know you do. And I'll be back in a few hours, okay? After I married David, I didn't really have any friends to turn to. I'd always been sort of a loner. My parents, forget it. I just had David. What about your parents? What about them? Did you talk to them? My parents just couldn't be bothered. Nothing I did ever pleased them. They thought I was a big mistake. I just wanted them to love me. Did you begin to feel that nobody loved you, including David? David thought he had to give me things. That's how he showed his love. He had to provide. And when money started getting tight, he got frustrated and withdrawn. Everything was about the money. He just let it tear him up inside. Yeah, six grand. Trade my old clunker, and I'm looking at a shiny new convertible. You need a new car for a man. You're married. It's over for you. Fuck you, Rod. <laughs> Look, I didn't need a new car to get this. What is it? Remember the blonde back of La Brea? You know? It's her number. She gave it to me. My husband was in the next room, for Christ's sakes. I know, man. You kept him busy for me. I appreciate it. <sighs> what is it with you? been my partner less than a month and this is what the third time a regular horn dog tennis that's what I like about domestic disturbances you got all these sex hungry housewives out there you gotta try it sometime man <laughs> oh thank you got all I can handle back home you got a bad attitude that's why we gotta take advantage of this shit you know someday I'm gonna write a book about it yeah, we're right for TV. That's where the bugs are. See, there you go. You got money on the brain. You gotta lighten up. Let's go back to the boulevard. I got something that's your speed. What do we got here? A titty bar? You sure got it. Maybe I'll get lucky and run into Lamberti and Hernandez. Friends of yours? <laughs> Hardly. These guys are dirtbags, all right? They call themselves talent agents for exotic dances. They deal in flesh and drugs. Recruit young girls, get them high, abuse them, turn them into hookers. <clears throat> Ecstasy is their drug of choice. Biggest deal is around. I have a dream. It's to bust these guys big time. Gigantic pulse. 
Jason. Mind if we cross that one? Oh, maybe cool. At your service, Officer Tennyson, my new partner, William Lamberti. I always like to see cops here. Can I offer you a drink? Oh. Nah, I'll just take the liquor license. Bullshit. You guys have been coming here for years, and you're using the last people to leave at night. Strictly in the line of duty, sir. Strictly in the line of the fact that I got the best tits in town. Hey, kid. You got an honest face. I'll let his hypocrisy book to myself. Yeah, well, I'm a nice guy. Taking care of her, giving her a break. I can afford to. Afford to be a uh, Is that the license, sir? Well, you know, I don't really own this place. But this is the owner here who wants to see your liquor license. Okay, come to one. Yeah, so why don't you take that over to your friend, Fletcher Ross? Uh, you do know that asshole, don't you? Mr. Ross has the city's best interest at heart. He does what you need. <laughs> yeah, well, he'd be right here, right now, sticking a 10 spot up that chick's ass if he wasn't running for mayor. <laughs> he sent you, didn't he? I haven't seen him in months. Well, when you do see him, why don't you tell him if he touches this place? I will get every hooker, every stripper, every pimp, to register the vote. I'll kick him out of those fucking things. Shouldn't be too hard, Bill. Every one of them's on your payroll. We know. growing. You sent for the cops? No. No, they came to be the girls. No, our reputation. Listen, I want this place drug-free. You don't have to worry. Everybody here knows I'm a hell of a lot tougher than a fucking DJ. They got something special for you upstairs. Guillermo, you siempre sabes lo que me gusta. That asshole Lamberti. Yeah, that prick probably makes more money in a month than I'll see in my lifetime. Tell me something, David. When you walk into a place like that, are you thinking to yourself, why the fuck am I married? No, because Joanne's worth ten of them. Ten? It's pretty incredible. So is she, pal. I wonder what she says about you. She says, I'm all she needs. Taking it because I was depressed. The main thing it did was loosen me up. Can you elaborate? I thought about having sex with a lot of guys, a lot of different ways. I thought about seducing a room full of prim guys like judges and lawyers and doctors. And they couldn't resist my charms. And they turned into animals. Not literally, but wild sex creatures. And they'd start taking me by force and passing me around from man to man. And, um... I thought about seducing a young guy who's never had sex before. 
And I just have to teach him everything. And I thought about sex with a beautiful woman. And couples. Um, no, I do it good for you. My makeup is so good. God, shut up and you'll be out of here in an hour. Now there's plenty of time for us. Let's get up here. Imagine being cooped up with her for five minutes. Quite a prize, huh? Yeah, booby prize. It was a Tuesday. I was driving to work. I had this shift at this cocktail lounge. I was late, so I guess I was speeding. He pulled me over and he gave me a traffic ticket. A week later, he paid my fine. He left his wife, and that was that. The first few months, David was incredible. I had never had a man treat me so well. It was like we were one person. When the money got tight, we started having problems. He was always worried about being able to pay the bills. The mortgage on the house, it was way too high. So he worked more. We had less time together. I made up this total fantasy life. I made up all these men who paid attention to me. When did that end? It didn't. And so, the relationship got worse. So I decided I was going to make David pay attention to me like he did when we were first together. Councilman Fletcher Ross officiated at groundbreaking ceremonies for the Angelico Shelter for Abused Children. Ross described the shelter as one more facet of his Clean Up Our City campaign. Mayor Orange, in many areas thought to be strongholds of Mayor Garibaldi. I think you look good. The goddamn television is out. He must have felt rejected. He was really withdrawn. I thought that he was unhappy with me and that he'd grown tired of me. I didn't know that we were on the verge of a breakthrough in our relationship. I kept Who is it? Intercontinental Cable. You reported a problem? Do you need to come inside? Yeah, I need to check all the connections inside and out.
Do you want something to drink? Uh, no thanks. Are you sure? Uh, if it's not too much trouble. No trouble at all. So what do you got? What would you like? What's your husband drink? Beer, I guess. So what'll it be? He's a cop? That's right. A boy's fantasy come true. So he's always gone, fighting crime. Sounds dangerous. I like danger. I, uh, I'm married. We have a lot. He liked to watch. That's what really turned him on. That was the secret. Watching me have sex with other men. Doing everything nasty with them. He loved it all. That's how it all got started. Whose idea was the ad? Yours or his? Mine, I think. I'd said it as a joke, but uh, David was all for it. The money ever. It was like therapy for both of us. I know this is going to sound strange to a lot of people, but it saved our marriage. And we were two people who loved each other very much. We still do. We have power. Aha! <laughs> Smile for me, baby. All right. How about parting those lips? Sure you want to go through with this, Joanne? So enjoy yourself and uh, remember, I'm right in the next room. Okay. I think he's here. I love you. choice. Well, I only pay for the best. You're a lawyer? You could say that. What would you say? I guess I would say I'm an assistant DA. I'm impressed. Well, some girls find my position intimidating. Come on, a sexy guy like you? Do you have some glasses for this? Wouldn't you be more comfortable in the bedroom? Actually, if you don't mind, Joanne, do you mind if we just talk for a while? about your job.
really want to know? Yeah, Mrs. Cole, I really want to know. He was... <laughs> totally unselfish. He really got into how I felt. He kept touching me, stroking me, till I thought I was going to explode. It's weird, but it was all about making me feel good. Maybe he came here tonight to prove he could make someone else happy. Yeah. Or maybe he was just looking to get laid. And that was great. The two of us were together, completely together. Well, not exactly just the two of you. How many others were there in the beginning? At first it was one or two a week. Come in. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Pleasure. I knew that she was me if I hadn't found a way to get out. But I found a way to be happy. And David loved me. We could have gone on like that for the rest of our lives. Yeah, David. William Lamberti here. Uh, listen, uh, I need your help, guy. You're under a lot of heat. Uh, guy Fletcher Ross sent over some jerk yesterday. So, uh, I need you to get him off my back. Look, I know how you like to watch my girls dance. I'm a generous man when it comes to favors. I'm not asking for anything free. I don't need anything from you, so go screw yourself. What's that all about? Eh, yeah, nothing. Just, uh, some lunatic. Can you believe these bastards want to cut our pay? Like we don't have enough to put up with around here? Hey. It happens every year. It's just talk. We put our lives on the line every day for these assholes, and look what we get back, huh? Yeah. I should have gone to medical school like I wanted to. It's only money. I, I thought all you cared about was money. Rod, there's some things in life money just can't buy. Like what? Love. And the perfect woman. Come on in. Thanks. You're a friend of Judge Keaton's? Yes. <laughs> he was right about you.
You're a lawyer? Me? No, I'm a doctor. Really? What kind? I'm a heart specialist. Keeps you healthy. <laughs> Is that true? Sure. Here's to our health. I think we'll keep them on. They always take such good care of themselves. There's some things money just can't buy. Everyone was saying the same thing today. You tired or what? You got that one right. What's officer I'm not getting paid shit grinning for? Well, it's not money, so you figure it out. Oh, yeah. The big date. So how was she? Question is, how wasn't she? Does that mean she was good? Good? Oh, man, she, she did everything. There's not one thing she didn't do. You're gonna feel like crap. She was probably 55 with loads of kids. Let me tell you something, partner. She did things that your wife would never, ever do. <laughs> so why don't you tell me about it? It was wild. It lasted for hours. Brad was a great partner for both of us. And David didn't mind? No. Did he ever get tired of watching? Not really, but after a while, he wanted me to watch with him so we could make love in front of the screen. And basically, he wanted to do what we saw. I would be the woman on the screen, and he would be the man, or whoever. And that way, we could share the benefits of our education. I'll be there as soon as I can. So, just make sure the tabs on the tape aren't broken. And press play and record. Good. See you later, baby. Forget it, Dave. I never met a woman who could work a VCR. <laughs> this is no ordinary woman. I didn't know it was unlocked. Are you who I think you are? Wait. Wait. I didn't do nothing, officer. <laughs> Dave. This lady invited me here. Has he done anything to you? No. Are you sure? I just want him to go. So this lady's your girlfriend. Or is it your wife? That night really scared me. Up until then, it had been people I liked. Civilized people. Certainly nobody I had to be afraid of. David knew that things would never be the same after that. He tried to pretend that things would go back to normal, but... I saw a friend of yours tonight. I think he could help us. Hey! You know, William Tell or William Not Tell, if you're lucky, huh? Hey, only fooling. It's Lamberti. Boy, have I got a great deal for you. So give us a call here. I'll have to talk to you real soon while this is all fresh in your mind. Ciao, baby.
So who's the guy Lombardi who called? You heard that one, huh? Mm-hmm. Guy's nobody. <clears throat> Scum. Forget it. What was that weird message all about? Nothing I can't handle. Are you into politics or you just like my campaign? Well, I like what you do for women. And looking around the office, I see that um, you hire mostly women. I do what I can. I believe that um, politicians can make a difference. And they're not out for themselves how everybody says they are. Well, maybe we can use you a little more. Well, feel free to call me anytime. And overtime is no problem. Good. Sometimes I do need extra help at night. Sorry, Fletch. I didn't know if anyone was here. Hello, David. How you been? Uh, Diane, give me a cup of coffee, will you, please, Black? Yes. <laughs> Business as usual, eh, boss? You gotta keep the followers happy. Especially around election time. Huh? Yeah, those lemmings, too. Hey, David, I'm on kind of a tight schedule. What can I do for you? Actually, Fletch, I think it's something I can do for you. Really? The guys and me have been talking, and uh, we decided, you know, you've done some real good things for the force over the years, and uh, we sure like to see you become the next mayor. Use all the support I can get. And so we want to start helping you close down some of them damn strip clubs. Get in there, look for violations, make it real difficult for the customers to enjoy themselves, you know? What's the catch? We're worried about pay cuts. Don't worry, David. There'll be no pay cuts. Here's your coffee, sir. Thank you. Diane, there's some floors in the Goober account in the outer office. Would you get those for me, please? Yes. You sure can't pick them. You still married? Yeah. I heard you got married again. <laughs> yeah. You don't seem too thrilled about it. No, it's okay. It's a good arrangement. But uh, there's some things in life you gotta leave home to get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tell me about it. Heck, I was with some girl last night. I gotta tell you. you know, I've always had a weakness for beautiful women, but this one was flawless. But I should push on. Hey, wait a minute. Tell me about her. What, the, the wife? Oh, dickhead. The girl last night. Oh, well, that's the damnedest thing. I, I, I saw about it in a newspaper, an ad. What, an outcall service? No, no. This is a freelance situation. Very exclusive. I have had everything I ever wanted. Then go home. You don't need me. I'm a pretty important man, lady. I keep this whole damn city running smoothly. <laughs> great. Oh, fucking great. I tell you, just great. And plenty of close ups. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, you know what I feel? I feel uh, vindicated. I thought you would. No, I see it. There's two things that make the world go round. One is sex, and money. 
And we're in the same business, you and me, and, and your wife. We got the same uh, animal instincts, you know what I mean? Well, there's two kinds of animals. The ones that eat, and the ones that get eaten. You know what I want to see? I want to see Fletcher Ross mauled and then eaten. <laughs> Can you dig it? <laughs> You're getting ahead of yourself. First, we gotta discuss terms. Terms? What are you talking about? Terms? The tape's yours. For 50 grand. In cash. By Friday. What are you, nuts? I thought I was talking to a reasonable man. Where the fuck do you think I'm gonna get a hold of 50 grand? You got connections. Hey, why should I give you a goddamn nickel? It's your ass that's on the line. All I gotta do is take this tape to the cops. And I know plenty of cops. Yeah, me too. And that got me thinking. I mean, I've been on the force, what, seven years? Seven years without one reprimand. So who are they gonna believe? You? Or me? You got any proof? Yeah. I got the ad. That don't mean shit. Oh yeah, you got the word of Melcho Hernandez. But I bet you 50 grand. You couldn't get that twisted, son of a bitch, anywhere near a police station. Stay in touch, huh? Don't you think you should tell me what's going on? Try your tea. Tell me if I made it too strong. Are you blackmailing Fletcher Ross? Personally? No. But if it suits our purposes to help one of his enemies, then who cares? The guy's a first-class prick. David. Joanne. You're looking at a good, clean cop, okay? Nobody puts the screws on me, on us. Just turning the tables, okay? I don't know. In fact, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you, because it's all taken care of. Rather neat little piece of work on my part. Open wide. <laughs> I had my doubts. I trusted David to work things out. It was beyond his control. Lamberti was as determined to keep himself in action as we were. As a policeman, David should have known. If you bring the streets into your home, you can't control what's going to happen. What if he changes his mind? Hmm. He's a businessman. He'll take the easy way out. What about Ross? <laughs> Fletch is no fool. He'll find some new cause to focus in on. Someone's here. He's a friggin' dyke! Let me talk to her. And get rid of her. Joanne, it's Ingrid. Ingrid, what is it? Please, darling, I have to talk to you. It's very important. I can't talk to you, not now. You have to leave. I, I tried calling. Look, I have tickets. I'm taking you to France. I've got everything planned. You don't have to worry about the thing. Ingrid, I can't leave. Not now. Oh, but I'll buy you clothes. I'll take care of you. I can't. But I love you. Ingrid, no! Ingrid, guess what? We're not interested in your fucking problem. David, what do you think you're doing? Emergency, please help me. I saw a man at the house with my friend. He's got a gun. Yes. 650 Paloma Avenue in uh, Wooden Hills. Yes. It's 
Gotta be him. Okay, let him in. Just make sure he's alone, all right? Started all the fuss. Hello. Understand you're gonna become a big video star. <laughs> Unlock the case, Lamberti. But you gonna offer me a drink? Just open the goddamn case. <sighs> David. If we're gonna be partners, you gotta learn to trust me. Feast your eyes. Okay, fix the <laughs> David. That maniac broke into my house. What? This is your house? He was after my wife. Your wife? Who's gonna kill me, Rod? Yeah, why don't you uh, tell him about the blackmail scam? Tell him about the videotapes. With your wife making it with all of her uh, gentlemen friends. Let's talk about this at the station, huh? Yeah, if I talk, I tell him everything. Hear me. And that's how it goes down, partner. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. got hold of your story. I didn't realize that was such a big deal. I didn't know our story would attract so much attention. I wasn't prepared for any of it. And from what I hear, there are dozens of public and private figures that would do just about anything to keep their name out of it. I wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, I can't comment about that at this time. Our office is not ready to release any information about the case, so there's been a full review. What can you tell us about the videotapes? I can't comment. But the people who have seen the tapes have identified many of the people involved. What are you saying about that? I, uh, can't comment. Well, what about Fletcher Ross? Judge Keaton, members of the police department. No comment. What about the black book? No comment. Mr. Craven, these people are witnesses to a crime, and under state law, their names have to be made public. Are you aware of that? Wait a minute. What crime? Mr. Van Horn. As a Cole's attorney, you should be well aware of the charges being brought against them. Prostitution and extortion. There is no prostitution. 
No extortion. No crime of any kind. What about the videotapes? Okay, I'll come to that. What about the black book? I'll answer all your questions. Just give me a chance to tell the truth. What has been characterized as a crime perpetrated by the codes is actually a tragedy. What has been called perverseness is underneath all the tar and feathers really a love story, pure and simple. What we have here is a loving couple, compatible in every way except in the bedroom. Joanne Cole suffers from excessive sexual desires, nymphomania, a medical condition. Induced and exacerbated by the use of the drug Primac, which was prescribed to her by a medical doctor. Because of the deep love that this couple felt for one another, they dealt with this blow to their marital stability in a sane and rational way. Accommodation. If this had been a wasting illness, David Cole would be praised for supporting his wife's needs. He would have been called a hero and she would have been a saint. She took her treatment, her therapy in a safe environment, a clinical environment entirely under the supervision of her husband. They needed and depended on one another because they loved each other. There's a black book with names and dates and dollar amounts, heaps of videos of judges, politicians, and lawyers embedded with your client. How does all this square with your therapy defense? These other people, their names, their prestige were irrelevant to the codes. The camera was David's way of assessing his wife's condition. It was as clinical as an x-ray or an MRI. Look, I hope that everybody who hears the cold story will recognize the commonality of it and perhaps relate it to travails in their own lives. Then I think the public will react generously, not just with sympathy, but with understanding. Mr. Mr. Van Horn! Mr. Van Horn. t-shirts with your picture on it you've been on radio shows you've been on national television you're a celebrity now it's incredible isn't it now that you've accepted the plea bargain are you gonna put all this behind you no I think it'll be kept alive for a long time why because I think it fulfills a need I think a lot of people would like to experience my story firsthand but they can't or they won't and so the more details they hear, the more real the experience becomes to them. What about the videotapes? Did Fletcher Ross's resignation and withdrawal from the mayor's race have anything to do with you? All I know is what his statement said, that he had some sort of medical problem. Beyond that, I wouldn't presume to comment on his motives. So what are your plans? Our plans? Hmm. We've had a lot of nice offers. I think we're going to go to Barbados for a while. I think we'll work things out on the beach, have some fun. You're welcome to join us if you'd like. <laughs> well, if you had a chance to do it all over again, would you do it again? I'd leave out a few things, but overall, sure. I got what I always wanted, didn't I? Which was? Love. Well, I guess that sums it up. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Yeah. Hi, Mom and Dad, if you're watching. <laughs>